Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to my review of the ShotScope V2 GPS and performance tracking watch. Now if you follow me on Instagram at Andy's Golf Blog, you'll have noticed that I've been using this for quite a while and I often post about it because I think it is an exceptional piece of kit. I won it in a competition um, a couple of months ago and since then I've been using it every single time I play golf. Now as far as performance tracking and GPS watches go, I think there's probably few on the market that do as good a job as ShotScope. So let's take a look at the device in more detail. This is the ShotScope V2. It is quite a large golf watch, I'm going to be honest. However, it's extremely light at just over 60 grams, so when it's on your wrist, you don't tend to even remember it's there. It fits comfortably, and I think it looks really good. It's got a large screen on it to allow you to see the distances to the front, middle and the back of the green, and to hazards, and it's got five buttons that are fairly well hidden on the side for accessing menus and for collecting your pin data. There's a large strap on it, which is um, very comfortable, and will fit a wide range of players' arms and it also locks in securely in place so it doesn't move around and it still feels comfortable. All in all, I think it's a really well designed watch. Before your round, insert one of the tags that you get with your shot scope into each of the clubs. Here I'm putting the sand wedge in and then simply head into the app or the desktop into your My Bag area of your account and log the tag that you're using with your account. After that, just remember to take the shot scope to the golf course and as long as you've downloaded your round onto the device, you're ready to go. But you can do this at the course if you forget. Okay, so I've arrived down at the golf club and I'm ready to play. I've brought my shot scope device. And the first thing I have to do is just choose which mode I'm going to use on the course and then connect to the GPS. So in this instance, I'm going to use the GPS and tracking, which means that it will track my shots, but also give me the yardages. And this is probably the mode I use most often, I would say. Now ShotScope recommend that you do this roughly 10 minutes before you play your round, certainly the first time that you, you play a new course. I've already synchronised the course with um, the device, so the course mapping is on the device. And all I really need to do at this point is to just search for the course and let it connect. So I'm going to go and choose um, GPS and tracking mode. I'm going to choose Burnt Island Golf Club and I'm just going to press a little tick and it will search for it and then I know it's ready because it will display the club and then all I've got to do is press the tick and then I'm ready to hit the course. Now if you're used to using a GPS watch then you'll be used to getting yard just to the front, the middle and the back of the green. Shot scope's no different, it does exactly the same. I've always used apps on my phone and I found that the yardages were really, really inaccurate. With the shot scope, I'm looking at this chip here and I've got about 67 yards to the middle. The pin's at the front, so my yardage to the front is 56 and to the back is 78. Really handy on a hole like the 7 foot front island where the green slopes really badly from the back to the front. And if for example the pin's at the back, you absolutely do not want to go long. It's really handy to be able to look at the device and get these yardages to the front, middle and the back. And they're very, very accurate. I've played with players who use the laser finders and I think about the time we get the same yardage when we're looking at the, um, at the flag. So, so far really impressed and it's definitely, definitely helped improve my game having these yardages to the front, the middle and the back. I'm just going to take this little opportunity now to talk about one of the other features that I think is really useful and that's recording um, penalty shots. With the V2, you press the middle button and it brings up some penalty options. It's something that I don't always tend to use because I find there's three or four different options and don't always know exactly which one to use and when to use it but it is a quite a nice little feature that they've added and certainly an improvement from v1 so another real positive for the shot scope v2 Right, let's have a little talk about the pin collect technology. So ShotScope have built in 
pin collect. And what that means is once you putt out like I did there, when you're lifting your ball out the hole, on the device it'll say how many putts did it take you and you press the allowed number. So one, two, three or four putts. Or if you're having a really bad day you can put in more. It's a really useful feature because it means that when you're looking at your stats, you know that they're accurate. You know that the distance of your putts or the length of your approach shots is correct. It's really, really useful and it's really important when you're looking at your stats that they're as accurate as possible. And I think it's a very simple feature, but it's very, very useful. Right, let's have a talk about the um, battery life of the device. This is something with any tech device we're always interested in, is how long is it going to last between charges. ShotScope recommend that you give it five hours to charge it fully. So it's probably the sort of thing you want to charge the night before you're playing uh, and not you know, half an hour before you're round. Standard USB um, charging connector to micro USB and the slot's on the back of the watch. So it's well positioned, it doesn't get any dirt into it. It's got a nice little rubber cover over it and also it means that the cover's not likely to fall off like what has happened to other devices I have and they start getting little bits of dirt in them. So well positioned charging slot, five hours to charge and make sure you do it the night before. I wouldn't tend to use the device for more than one round between charges if I'm honest. Um, I'm looking at it just now after playing for about, about an hour and it looks like I've maybe got about 60% left. So it does drain quite quickly. I mean, if you're using the mode that doesn't have the GPS on, then it'll probably use a little bit less. But of course, if it's constantly trying to get your data um, for yardages and hazards and things, it is going to eat up the battery life. So probably not far off what most devices have, but I would say that um, that it's, it's fine for one round, which is the minimum we'd expect. I would like to be able to see my device last for a little bit longer than one round, but one round as a minimum is good enough for us right now, I'd say. So a really good enjoyable round of golf tonight. That's me finished, I've headed home and I'm ready to upload the data from the ShotScope watch to my computer. So let's take a look at that process, but for that we'll head inside. Now when you finish your round, you'll need to get the data from the ShotScope into the, your account. I tend to do this with a mobile app because it's quick and easy. Follow the instructions on the screen and it pulls information through, but you can do it with the desktop version if you want. More often than not with the app, all I really do is check that it's calculated all of the shots and maybe change the T so if it says I'm in the white T but it was the yellows I can make that correction here. You can see on screen that you can go in and edit individual holes but for me it's a little bit difficult at this stage so it's hard to zoom in and see the, the precise points on the green it's quite a small view you get um, if you're editing the pin positions or something like that. So I tend to basically use the app just to bring the information through um, and upload the round and then I tend to use the main desktop editor to do the bulk of the editing work and to save my final round. Here you'll see I'm using the desktop editing tool and I can zoom into a much larger map and be a lot more accurate when I'm checking whether or not it tagged on the fairway or if the pin was on the green, that sort of thing. I would prefer when I click on individual shot for it to zoom into that point on the map. It gets a bit frustrating if, for example, you're looking at the first tee shot and you want to then skip to the green, you've got to drag along and then zoom in. This is something I think ShotScope could work on, or should in the future in my opinion, um, to make it a little bit quicker and easier to edit. But generally speaking, once you've edited, then you can sign off your round and you see your general stats for the round, you've got all of your data contained within what's the area, and you can see how you performed on average on the par 3s, 4s, or your score in general. The information you gather though is so useful. Here we're looking at my clubs. So how do the clubs perform in general? We can look at all rounds or just your last round or your last five. We can select a specific club to see the yardage for that club. And we can also look at things like tee shots, approach shots or the short game. The real standout here though is to use the performance average, so that P average stat. This will show me how each club performs on average minus any you know, layups or short shots or shots that didn't work out quite to plan. So it's great to be able to use this data to see how I'm performing on average with each of these clubs. There's a lot of other information built into the performance area of shot scope though. So we can look at how we perform off of the tee, which clubs are the most accurate, which clubs are used the most often, how far did the clubs go, how many shots have led with that club to a birdie or a bogey. 
and we can see things like the um, the distance that we hit the club so not just how accurate you are but how far we're hitting that club off of the tee um, and we can look at this for the last year your last round or all rounds um, and specific clubs there's also um, a really useful area called approaches so in here we can look at how well you perform on your approach shots you can change the distance to drop it down so rather than looking at 250 am I getting tight and within 150 yards which clubs perform best which clubs lead to the fewest putts and then we can look at things like the, the putting stats so the number of one putts, two putts, three putts how often the putt is left short, how often they're left long what's my average putts per round, what's the longest amount of putts huge amount of information they've also introduced something called medals so every time you sign off a round you've got the chance to unlock medals it's a great way of adding a little bit of uh, competition to your round so if your friends are unlocking medals or you want to try and unlock these medals some of them are achievable so you'll see I've got all of my proximity ones there um, some of them are very very difficult to get so number of birdies, um, twos, pars, eagles, double eagles um, and for example hole one or three eagles in the same round I mean these are ones I'll probably never ever achieve but it's nice to have medals included there's also a leaderboard so this is an area where you can go and have a look at how you're performing against other players who use shot scope again it's just about adding a little bit of competition making it you know making you work harder to try and up your stats up your game but also compete against others In summary, I think the Shotscope V2 is a fantastic piece of kit. It looks good, it feels good and it does exactly what it says on the tin. You can use it on the course for GPS data and off the course for the stats that can really help develop your game. I've got no doubt that it's helped develop my game and I would encourage anybody who's thinking about getting a GPS watch to consider the Shotscope V2.